Hello, and welcome to the Best and Worst Pictures Podcast. I'm your host, Jake, and with me as always, my good host, Ian. Ian. And joining us, as per usual, is my other equally as good two co-hosts, Mud and Jokin. How are you guys doing? Ian. <laughs> nope, that's still not that. Oh, much. did too it, soon? Too, too far? Too, Ian? too much. Ian? Ian? So much Ian. What is this show, you might ask? Well, it's not Ian. You see, every so often we sit down and watch a Best Picture winner, and we decide if it's one of the best or worst pictures as compared to the other winners, and this week we're talking about the... I got it, I got it, I got 37th? it. 37th? 30... Ninth Ooh, best picture on. winner ever, which is of course none other than the 1966 classic hit film *A Man for All Seasons*. And to start us off, Mud has collected some fun facts about the film, which Jokin and I have, and also Ian have not. Heard <laughs> <of them. laughs> I actually know all of them. It's true. I told so, I told Ian already. Yeah, okay, uh, so just yeah, that, that yeah, tracks. So yeah, Mud, la, la, la. take it away. Thank you, Jake. So, A Man for All Seasons was released on December 12th, 1966, and was released in the UK in March of 1967. It has a runtime of exactly 120 minutes, 7.7 .7 out of 10 IMDb, 89% Rotten Tomato Critics, 87% Rotten Tomato Audience, 72 Metacritic Score with a 7.1 Audience Score, and the... Uh, Little tagline for it on Rotten Tomatoes reads, Solid cinematography and enjoyable performances from Paul Schofield and Robert Shaw add a spark to this deliberately paced adaptation of the Robert Bolt play. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, another play adaptation. Yeah. Yay. Let's go. So the director is Frank Zimmerman, who is actually a returning face. He directed From Here to Eternity. Oh. I the guy. Is that the Pearl Harbor one? That's the Pearl Harbor one, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's how I remember it. That's how we remember it. Yep. He also directed High Noon, which was the Oscar winning film that didn't win the oscar against the greatest show on earth mm -hmm. uh some fun facts about him or rather fun fact uh marlon brando rod steiger montgomery clift and marilyn streep all made their u.s debut under his directing like he made stars back in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. montgomery clift is such a bitchin name on a side note yeah it is we talked about that from here to eternity in from here to eternity uh so the uh lead actor in this film is named paul schofield he didn't really do a lot from what I could tell, but two of the films that he did do were Quiz Show in 1994, which love was nominated movie. for Best Picture. Absolutely love that movie. And The Crucible in 1996. Oh, I've seen The Crucible. <laughs> uh, you love he's that definitely movie? A... I think it's good. No. <laughs> it's, it's no Quiz Show. <laughs> he's definitely a quality over quantity actor because he has the, uh, the title of the quickest triple crown win in the, in the U.S. for acting. So that's an Oscar, an Emmy, and a Tony. In seven years, that's he earned all nice. three. Wow, that's pretty quick. That's basically mm. an Oscar, or that's an award every other year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Also in this film is Orson Welles, known oh. for Casino Royale. And the nothing bad else. one? Yes. Nothing else. Yeah. And John Hurt, <laughs> uh, The Elephant Man, V for Vendetta, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. You know, a very prolific actor. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to gloss over everything else Orson Welles has ever done in just Absol like Casino Royale, the bad one? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, this checking. was actually John Hurt's like breakout role. This is this is what people remember him being in first. Other prominent films that came out this year include The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Banger. Monsters Go Home. Who's oh, Afraid of Virginia cool. Woolf? <laughs> Batman, 1966. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, Django, which is the namesake of the Django Unchained. Sure. The Battle of Algiers. El Dorado, and Fahrenheit 451. Woo. There you go. So some production facts. Mostly about the casting, actually. Schofield was not the first choice for the producers. Both Richard Burton and Laurence Olivier were considered and even approached, but director Zimmerman insisted on Schofield. Mm -hmm. Alec Guinness was the first choice for the role that eventually went to Orson Welles. Peter O'Toole and Richard Harris were both considered for the role of King Henry, which would be played by Robert Shaw. Wait, Richard Harris, like, first Dumbledore Richard <laughs> like, Harris? first Dumbledore Harris. Okay, cool. Uh, the film had a budget of only $2 million. As such, a lot of actors took pay cuts to appear in the film. Wow. John Hurt, for example, was only paid 3 k Oh, wow. Holy okay. shit. Three grand. Vanessa Redgrave, who cameos as Anne Boleyn, wasn't even paid at all. She said she did it for fun. Aw. Wow. That's funny. Yep. That's cool. Zimmerman also referred to this film in his biography as the easiest film he ever made. Jeez. Uh, noting that it was, uh, well, crediting that to the talent of the casting crew he worked with, the film only took 12 weeks to shoot. Wow, that's spectacular. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. And Orson Welles often claimed that he directed all his own scenes. That's simply untrue. Mm, what a guy. What a guy. Some ceremony facts. Every single man nominated for Best Actor was the lead in the films nominated for Best Picture. Huh. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bob Hope was uh, once again the host. With 13 nominations, the most nominated film of the night was Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? 
but with six wins, a man for all seasons was the most awarded. Dang. Imagine getting nominated 13 times and winning less than... Less than half. Less than half. Irishman. <laughs> oh, win nothing. This ceremony set a new record for the most films taking home multiple wins at six separate films taking home two or more awards each. Wow. That's pretty good. This record was tied in 2010, 2012, and 2017 and surpassed in 2020 slash 2021 ceremony. Mm-hmm. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was also the first film to receive a nomination for every credited cast member. So everyone who appeared in the opening credits got a acting nomination. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Wow. This was the last year to separate awards that were given into black and white and color films for cinematography, art direction, set direction, and costume design. Sidney Poitier presented the Best Supporting Actress Award. Oh my god, the director of Ghost Dad. <laughs> Vanessa Redgrave and Lynn Redgrave were both nominated for Best Actress. This was the first time in 25 years that two sisters were nominated in the, that category, which was back in 1941, which I believe was not Rebecca, the one after it, with Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine, which we did talk about. Yes, yes we did. And lastly, the Best Picture Award was presented by Audrey Hepburn. Yeah! That Ooh. made me happy. Awards nominated. Uh, Wendy Hiller lost Best Supporting Actress to Sandy Dennis for her role in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Other nominees included Jocelyn Legrand for Hawaii, Vivian Merchant for Alfie, and Geraldine Page for You're a Big Boy Now. <laughs> what a good title of a <laughs> yep. film. And Robert Shaw lost Best Supporting Actor to Walter Matthew for his role in The Fortune Cookie. Other nominees include James Mason for Georgie Girl, George Seagal for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and Mako for The pa Sand Pebbles. A very prolific Japanese voice actor, Mako. Mm -hmm. Voice of uh, Master Splinter in the 2007 TMNT film. Yep. And also Uncle Iroh in Avatar The Last Airbender. Yep. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like, oh, shit. And uh, awards won. Joan Bridge and Elizabeth Haffenden took home Best Costume Design Color. Edith Head was nominated no! in this category. Her film was called The Oscar. <laughs> it funny. didn't win. I know. Ted Moore took home Best Cinematography Color. Robert Bolt took home Best Screenplay based on material from another medium, known today as Best Adapted Screenplay. Yep. He was also the writer of the play. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Paul Schofield took home Best Actor, beating out Alan Arkin, Richard Burton, Michael Caine, and Steve McQueen. Alan Arkin and Steve McQueen and Michael... Wait, wait, wait that's stacked. That's stacked. I know. I know. Uh, and Fred Zimmerman took home Best Director, beating out Michelangelo Anatione, Claude Lelouch, Richard Brooks, and Mike Nichols. Was that man's name Mike Angelo? Michelangelo. Like, that's a fucking good name. I like how it's the opposite of stacked. Yeah. From from the best it's actors. Stacked best actors. Michelangelo? Is it, it's the first name Michael, last name Angelo? And the four other films it beat out for Best Picture were Alfie, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, the Sand Pebbles, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Every single time I, I hear who, I keep thinking of who framed Roger Rabbit. And I just don't know why. And lastly, our Mary Pickford fact. Ian, Woo! I asked you if you'd already done this one, and you did not respond to me. I said, I don't remember. Okay. Mary Pickford briefly lived in an 18-acre mansion in Beverly Hills called Pickfair, which was demolished in 1990. I talked about the selling and demolishing, but I didn't talk about how she lived there. Yeah. I don't know what to expect here, lads. I really don't. I like the ones that I don't know how to expect, though. You know, no, I don't, because Tom Jones. <laughs> Tom. So, well, sometimes... We knew nothing! I knew stuff about it, and I knew, knew it was going to be sucked. bad. Yeah. Let's, let's, just, let's just start. Sometimes it hits you with, like, an apartment where it's just, like, a masterpiece. You never know. So let's begin with The Man for All Seasons, which I'm sure is just as good as The Apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, see you guys soon. just watched a man for all seasons how do we feel i don't man for all seasons man for all seasons guys we, a man uh, for all seasons man for all seasons we watched. i them. will say of all the best picture winners we've watched so far this certainly was one of them i yeah. have to say and this is a first this is the shortest amount of notes i've taken i have two <laughs> i am i am approaching shortest i have Barely over one page of a very small notebook that I have, and I space my notes out. It took mm. almost 40 best picture winners ever. Even the worst ones like Cavalcade or Tom Jones, I had like at least a page. Mm -hmm. I got well, mm -hmm. That's Two because lines. there are specific scenes in that that make it like that are explicitly bad. 
the scenes in this film are boring and not noticeable and very plain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I, there are... <laughs> who wants to start? I, I will start. Okay. There are exactly, exactly two interesting scenes in this film. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. It's uh, the first time that Thomas is called to testify about... Um, oh, God. I don't even remember now. So I guess it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> uh, the first time he's brought forward to talk with... Um, the king. Yeah, and yeah. Richard. Oh, the yes. king shows up and tries to convince him after he's now appointed to drop the... To do the no, I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm talking about way into the film. Like about an hour into this film. Yeah, it takes an hour for there to be an interesting scene. Yep. Um, where he's in the office for the first time discussing uh, like perjury and stuff with richard okay and then the other scene is his interrogation where he just won't say what they want him to say yeah i, I think those I are well written scenes yeah and i think they're well acted scenes yep. that scene with the king that you're talking about yes i fucking hate i love that scene the scene uh, no i hate the, the king the actor for that king is just awful i think he's awesome I he, think he nailed it. He sucked. Uh, you, he was so right. bad. He was. He was very bad. He's overacting. <laughs> okay. He's um, screaming his lines. He's he's screaming when he's angry, but he's also quiet when he's trying to be more nuanced. He's trying a lot of approaches at the same time. No, I, I think I think the problem with it is it's just extremely over the top for a very serious movie. So it doesn't mesh well. But also, he's also help. a child in an adult's body. Like he's still a spoiled king he, is used okay. to get he, wants. he wants everything that, yeah he wants to divorce and <laughs> fuck more bitches to try and get a son it's a sure but i still think his acting was bad and the screaming sure okay. was poorly placed i um, i would disagree but it, it's just it's so over the top and his costume sucks like the the gold <laughs> accenting on his costume his costume does suck it looks too modern it looks like it's polyester it looks like it's like looks like it feels like nylon real quick what was the budget Two million. It was a very, very low budget film. Mm, that was worth like eight trillion dollars back in the day. But I did note that uh, actors did take pay cuts to work on this film. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So like the whole thing reeks of cheapness. Yeah. Yeah. To an extent. Um, I also I like how Orson Welles is like barely in the film. Yeah. He just dies. Honestly, you don't need his character. No. Yeah. Not uh, really. Although to set up the king seeing him seen could set up the fact that like oh hey this is something that Henry VIII has always been trying to do and they he keeps getting shot down about it so I, I like you, that aspect but you could also just have that be in a line like, yeah you don't, need a five, you don't need a seven minute scene for what could be a line mm, it's I like show don't tell personally yeah but there's a time and a place for it it's like uh, Krypton in Man of Steel doesn't need a 25 minute cold open it's yeah, a 5 see, minute exposition Krypton is, an, is almost entirely useless whereas this I think sets up in at least an effective way for that scene but mm. that's just me nah I, I don't think it adds anything there's because you just get the same information later on that you know the king's been trying the last guy denied him and he wants you to approve and he still says no his yeah. character doesn't change and it's still all within the first what see, 20 30 minutes of the film i yeah. think it's more effective now that we've seen that this is a persistent issue it's more effective than being told it i think that's i mean a lot of movies could take notes from that they just mm. say things are important without establishing them really is all that important so you don't feel the way yeah but if it's them. the start of the film there's got to be some exposition i think it's i think it's a useless scene overall i don't see why it couldn't have just been a line. It, but also, that doesn't help the fact that the first interesting scene in this film's a fucking hour into it. The f all of Act 1 is just so boring. A lot of Act 1 is boring. I hey, would say Acts 1, 2, and 3 are overall boring. Act 2 had some interesting scenes. Overall, though, just... Overall, it's very it's very boring. I, yeah. I, I did my best to pay attention. We were all kind of fading in and out. I, this movie's hard to... I will say, focus on. and I feel like I'm probably the, the biggest proponent. I don't even like this movie all that much. No, <laughs> like, I. I'm the biggest proponent by default because I think you guys all liked it a lot less than I did. Well, 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 actually, you know, I'm not like, I'm not thinking of a negative score here. I am kind of also not, I mean, I don't know yet. I'm still mulling it over We're my head. We're still talking about it. I think I, have, about it. I think I have a general idea of what I'm going to give the score. And I, I would be shocked. To we, I, we're either <laughs> tied or I'm higher. I'll okay. say that. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I just. there. There's a couple things I do like about this film. Like sure. the, the I, And I think we all can agree here. The ending court scene. 
Yeah, it's, I, it's just it's just really good. like that. It's just game. great. It's great. I think and the, even if you okay, even if you don't agree with what he's saying, like people should be allowed to divorce, even if the king's being an asshole about it. People, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So, well, it's more so about the man's conviction. He exactly. doesn't care. He doesn't care about yeah. He doesn't care about the kids. He doesn't care about the remarrying. He cares right. about the king trying to put himself above the authority of someone he's. No, and, to. And, yeah. and it's and the principle. Of exactly. The I yes. like. I like that he sticks up for what he think is. He oh, yeah. thinks is I right. Think Thomas is a very well characterized character. Oh yeah. yeah. I think the best part of this film is Thomas. Is it, it, it's just Thomas. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's so and well. This written. is a character piece, so the film does do an effective job. Oh, of absolutely. That. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He, I think my favorite thing is he does not. He he does not waver from his 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 mild mannered temperament mm-hmm. yep. until the end when he goes, "Okay, I'm dying. You're you all, all damned. You've already convicted me. Mm-hmm. Nothing I can say will change your minds." Yep. And then it's that scene from Half Baked. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're, You're cool. cool. Fuck you. I'm out. Literally, exactly. that's exactly that's it. I'm exactly out. I like how life. that's the only point in the whole movie where he's actually acting that way. I yeah. like that because a lot of times in these like you know like Man for All Season type films where it's like a man of great conviction, mm-hmm. they try to make it out like he's never angry over anything. Mm-hmm. And I like it better when it is no inside he's fucking furious, but yeah. he's yeah. smart enough to be in control of that. And finally, when he gets to the end and he's like, all right, it's over. Fuck it. I'm going to say it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, exactly. I like that he's not above being like, yeah. Oh, it's no, a, it's no, all no, fair game. My mind now? Fair game? All right. You all suck. Mm-hmm. I'm out. Exactly. I, and I love how like Ian was mentioning that it was a character piece. It is because the whole point of the whole movie is that at any point in any scene, he could have caved a little bit and been fine. Yep. He could have been like, okay, fine, you can have a divorce this one time. And he would have lived a perfect life and no issues from that point forward. But every single scene, he is relentlessly devoted to his yep. morals and yep. will not compromise a little bit. There's yep. also an antithesis of this kind of film where you're talking about the one where he stays mild mannered the whole time. What about the guy who's just angrily preaching his own ideals and not wavering? Yeah, that's that, that as well. That sucks. This or is this is the perfect balance. Guys who are like, oh, should I waver? Like the internal conflict is one of the main things of the movie. And the, no, 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 no. Man in his convictions stays with it the entire time. Well, not always pissed. Like it's very effective. To be fair, though, Ian, for for he where, never mows it over. Even when his family's no, begging. No, no, no. For him. What I'm trying to say is, you know? in a movie, you can have your you can have your main character maybe be like, maybe you know there what I'm fighting for is pointless. Ways yes. To approach this. This is idea. a this right here though is it's a, a good, good way. Except that when Thomas is not on screen, <laughs> oh, the God. movie just so it's not bad, but again, I. I know this is a different commentary than, or, or the fact that we did a commentary at all, but I said earlier about a movie today that one of the worst crimes any piece of entertainment can do is just bore you. And this film, other than three scenes, is painfully boring. Oh, yeah. This is the most boring film we've watched today. Today, yes. Yes. <laughs> I, still, I still disagree. Oh. I still disagree, Ian. It's okay to be almost factually. I will also add... Um, this is circling way back because I just double checked my notes. When he gets the position, Jake, after Orson Welles' character dies, there's like a there's like an overture of music and a couple shots of like just B roll. Mm-hmm. It feels like a second opening to the film. It, yeah, it, it really probably, feels like there's like that's a- another thing that kind of threw the pacing off for me because I I was like, wait, was that a 15 minute cold open? Dude. What the <laughs> fuck just that, happened? Like, I was expecting. The title to pop up. And if it was five really... of those fifteen minutes are just like B roll of ducks. No. Speaking speaking there about were a lot of ducks. Speaking about that though, Mud, the movie ends where it begins with the same like the same pictures of yeah, like, the statues. It, that, with shitty well, voiceover exposition. It's not. It's characters. not terrible. No, it's it, ass. It's, it's not terrible. That's a terrible way to fucking film. I I your main I, character's dead. I think it's fine, but I do wish it ended. With just the sound of the axe yep. hitting his neck. Much more impactful than telling me what happens to all the characters after. I don't give a fuck. The only interesting mm-hmm. character is dead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't I don't mind it from a this, this might is have a been... historical film. It's yeah. always good to know where the historical yeah. characters this might end have... up. But it 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 would be a stronger ending if it just ended. Movies keep doing that today, but usually it's blocks of text I'm gonna saying th- things that happen. I'm gonna throw a curveball out. I think Boy. this movie probably 
would for me i don't want to see this as a movie i'd rather see the original play adaptation i wonder because i think it would probably work you know better i agree with joe quinn i think I also that's agree the with first joe. time you'll ever hear that folks that's probably the last <laughs> time too you know yeah. what joe quinn i'm not really a big play guy but this is a disgrace of the film me- of the film media so yeah I, 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 check I, don't think, I don't think I don't think it's one. a disgrace. Ian, I don't think it's a disgrace. I, Dude, I think, there's barely anything here. I'm sorry. This it's it's not throw it away. it's not great, but it's not awful too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. I'll give it that. There's there are there are some good jokes. moments. I think my favorite yeah. one was when he retires, when Thomas retires. And him and his wife are talking about all the things he can do. And he goes, I could teach you to read. And she's like, oh, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> Great line. Exactly. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I, I wrote down a note. And none of my notes are nice. Um, <laughs> I didn't put a positive thing down on this page. I <laughs> That every laugh in this film is so fake. This is a corny ass film. <laughs> how I wrote it. Like, it's so forced fake like <laughs> especially the first half oh of the when film. the king jumps into the mud and everyone starts Bruh. laughing that was weird every everything all of the king's laughs fucking all of his crony like every time anyone laughed on screen it did not feel real there was a single dutch angle in this film i have dutch angle it Post was marks. <laughs> it didn't help i think you were right jake i'm pretty sure he was leaning in the Dutch angle, and so it, was, it looked yeah. even more like a Dutch it, angle. It was, it was both. It was strange. It was yes yeah. and. Yeah. It was fucking weird. Uh, uh, one thing I will say, uh, Ian, you immediately came out uh, like you, you, sorry, gunning for this movie's neck immediately by starting to compare it to another movie you do not like. Hey, the other movie's a mid. This is infinitely worse. <laughs> what was the other movie? Again? It was Monty Python. Python. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, Ian was like, this looks just like a Monty Python film. And in the sense that it was made in England in the late 60s and early 70s, <laughs> Near the you're woods. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Near that's the all woods. I got. That's what like, you yeah, got. You, you, you're you on it, dog. <laughs> but... No, but like, if this was Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I would have enjoyed it much more. Fair. I like that. <laughs> um, I... God damn. <laughs> I, we were like, oh, we'll get 30 minutes out of this. Has it even been 20? But you were no. talking up a big game. I gotta say. Bro, listen. I don't want to stop. When it comes down to this film. Here, let me summarize the entire film for every single one of us. Are we ready for this? Are we ready to summarize the film? Sure. All right. Hello. I would like to divorce my wife and get a new wife. No, No, that's not allowed. You have to go through parliament for those kinds of things. I'm the king. And then the rest of the movie is him deliberating that with the court. And then he gets sentenced guilty and then gets his head chopped off. You're wrong. It's not parliament. It's the Pope. You're right. I mean, thank you. Yeah, different you, P word. But like, I summarize that basically the entire movie can be summarized in two sentences. There's a, cu- I mean, there's a couple things that you're like really glossing over, but they're not interesting. You're really, you're, uh, you're like the subplot with his daughter. Like I want to marry this Lutheran. No, no. and, and then, then they we, get married. I, we missed the part where they got married. Yeah, we did. Like this movie does a very very poor job of stretching out a two word sentence. This film. Is legitimately Henry VIII going, hello, this religion is Catholicism, but I'm divorcing my wife. That's it. Like, I don't get... I think you're skipping, like, one of the biggest aspects is they're trying to get him on literally anything. Because that, he's yeah. as clean as a whistle for yeah, the most... Yeah, and then, you know what, the most part, just lying instead exact, of saying things exactly. besides torture. Uh, I just thought of something I wanted to talk about, too. I'm sorry. The oath. I have a problem with the oath. Me too. Because Margaret's like, Dad, there's this oath they're making all the lords take about mm-hmm. the, the marriage. And he goes, what's the exact wording? Because depending on the wording, I might be able to take it. Hard cut to him in jail. Yeah. I, I don't... I don't... I, I, <laughs> I see what it does with the scenes in a lot of the courtrooms are so interesting that I just don't even... That doesn't even phase me. Like, I, I just... I love the writing... And whenever he's talking about the fact that he's not talking about taking the oath, that's so interesting to me. No, then, that's great. It's just that's I, an hour and fifteen minutes into a two-hour film. Sure, no, yeah, Fair, but I also all of the buildup is boring because we all know where it's going from the outset. Because true, from scene one with Orson Welles' character, he says, "I'm not going to do it," and then it's just an hour of him saying, "I'm not going to do it." I understand. So but you, you also, can I, fucking murder the yeah. first half of this film, but there's also, and then stretch out the second okay, half and so give us I, more cool court I, scenes. We're agreeing on what the movie is and what it does, but I disagree that the journey through him 
going through all of these trials and tribulations to stay what he believes in is boring. I think the pacing and execution is boring at a lot of points. Don't get me wrong, but I think the basic premise of just describing it in two sentences. Once the you can do with once any the film, investigation starts, that's the good part of the film. Sure, I think, that's fifty minutes in. I think one thing we're kind of glancing that's over almost here. Almost fifty percent of the film. One of the biggest parts of this film that we are all kind of just like glossing over right now is Rich. And his turn to like he how he gets corrupted throughout this film. He gets high. They, they keep bribing him. They keep offering him like yeah, higher well, positions he's of power. To be the antithesis of Thomas. I I know, but like at the begin, and you know, it's a nice like contrast to yeah. see that. And Especially like, because uh, Thomas was like Rich's like mentor. Exactly he's, at like, the beginning of the movie, they were like buddy buddy with each other and rich plainly states in his first scene yeah i want i want what every man says i want every man wants i want a position mm -hmm. and thomas is like richard be a teacher go be a teacher and he means it in like a, an endearing way like you're too good for this system yep mm -hmm. it will corrupt you like it corrupts all and it go, did go do something good with your life don't live in this this society we live in a society. I don't know, but other than that, I, there's not. Much I think to talk they kind of here. also undercut that a little bit by having Rich explicitly state that he's lost his innocence out loud. He did say that at one point. Yeah, like it's poorly executed. It's a lot. Of, there's some neat ideas there. You're not incorrect, but I think they again show don't tell. Don't have him explicitly state it. We see it throughout the movie when he takes that position as the what was it like. General for uh, Attorney Wales. General of Wales. Like, yeah, he's lost his morals because he's riding out his friend. We don't need him to say as he accepts the first bribe that he's lost his innocence. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. It's only the first part. You can still back out of it at some point. You don't. You're lose right. So, like the second you take something, you don't immediately lose your innocence. You it slowly corrupts you. Like yes, in that moment you're doing something wrong, but you can still have moments of backing out of it because you just fucking started. I will also add. The final scene in the church when Richard lies under oath to get Thomas convicted and fucking murdered. I'm, I'm more asking because I don't remember. That conversation that he tells of is mostly truthful up until the final until line the that final he says. Line. Yes. Did we see that conversation no. in film? Nope. I think nope. so. No, because I... when he took out the books, that was like a big deal when he was in the tower asking for books and they made the We don't they, ever did the see opposite. them remove the books. I can't remember if we actually saw that. I don't that. think we no. do because we... I remember him giving the order to remove the books. Then I remember him talking his to family his family. Comes in. Yeah. And then we got to that scene. So I don't think we saw it. So this is what I mean by I want to stretch out the second half because I would love to see that scene with Richard and Thomas talking cuz and we see Thomas not say the thing mm -hmm. and then in the court scene Richard's repeating it and it's and truth 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 and you're like lie. oh he's going to tell the truth and it finally lies Rules yeah free. you know yeah. and it, it it can also be a good character beat for Richard oh yeah because you could have maybe instead of him saying i've lost my you know he's all in for a penny in for a pound yep confliction because this was his mentor and then we see that final character beat where he condemns Thomas to death for his position. Mm -hmm. Yep. That would be a just stronger a, film. Just a lot of poor execution all around, honestly. Like, nope. there are some ideas that I really like here. I like a character piece. I like the conviction of the main character. I like the main character. I like strong, his, relationship with his, with his relationship with his family. He does a really good job. But, like, the king fucking sucks. And then the plot after that trails off a lot. And then we never see the king again after the intro. I actually liked that. Everyone keeps saying it's the king's will, the king's will. We never see the king directly ordering any of this. Yep. Yeah. I actually like that. It gives it a more Kafka-esque feel mm -hmm. where everyone keeps saying, I'm serving. Because in a way, they're all saying, oh, I'm serving a higher power. And Thomas is saying, I'm serving a higher power too. And they're like, yeah, but we serve the king. And it's like, bro, where's the king then? Yeah. Where he at? Where he mm -hmm. at? Yeah. Where's I, I like how the king is like a mirror of, oh, I'm serving God, because we well, never see God in it either. <laughs> like, you know, that's, so that's like, a cool so aspect. So, like, that kind of holds weight on Thomas's argument, where he's like, well, where's, where's your boy? Why isn't he here to, to you know, mm -hmm. argue with me directly? You're acting on his will. I'm acting on my I God's will. will. So, so here we are. Playing field. Exactly. Yeah, but so I know I, the king is real. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the sun is real. <laughs> um, I love that. No, but I still like that allegorical sense. There's a lot to like in here. It's just so it's poorly just, executed. It's just, it's like, 
it's like an endurance test, honestly. If you can stay awake through the first 50 minutes of this film, you'll be rewarded with amazing character interactions and good dialogue and really good set decoration. I yeah, you, you got to sit through 50% of it. You have to it. waste, like, at least 80% of the film to get to the 20% good parts, you know? I don't think it's 80-20. I think it's 50-50. I think it's 60-40. Are we giving it out, sure. out of 10s? This is what I'm hearing. This is sounding a lot like out of 10s. I got one more note. <laughs> At the beginning of the film, the uh, like opening texts and stuff said, Fred Zimmerman's film of, and then put the title <laughs> up. And I just, I wanted to note that because I don't think I've ever seen Because a it's a film of the play. Mm -hmm. True, but I just, the, the way it was Fred Zimmerman's, like the director. Zimmerman, yeah. By the way. I yeah. just think Zinnemann. it's. Zinnemann? Zinnemann. Zinnemann. Yep. My apologies. It all kind of runs together. They go like guys. Cinnamon. With Zimmerman a Z. is more common, so I don't blame Yeah, him. that's probably why. It's like, uh, yeah. oh, what's that name? I don't remember. Hans Zimmer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a Game of Thrones reference, but it, it it's just. Oh, that's not the Zimmerman I think of. It, it's I just name. Cinnamon. Yeah. In the books, cinnamon. In the books, there are three characters called the Kettle Backs, and everyone <laughs> reads their name as Kettle Blacks. Okay. Because the pot and the kettle. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I, do you have one more note before you gave your out of No, that was, that was my last note. Okay, well, I, I note having funny. said my two oats notes early on, I uh, got to say I also have no notes left. So Yeah, honestly. Or no, it's the other way around. They're kettle blacks, and everyone reads it as kettle backs. There's really nothing to talk about. All right, it's bet. It's just a lot of scenes of people so, talking. Um, out of tens then, right? Four out of ten. I think this is a mid-leaning negative. I think there's a lot to like here, particularly with some of the writing and the, the, obviously the character work. The main character is fantastic. Um, but a lot of your points I side with. Some I don't. I've already pointed those out, but a lot of the pacing issues are just not vibing for me. So I'd lean very slightly negative, but it, it's almost a mid. It's close to being a passable movie. It's mm -hmm, just a little mm -hmm, weak. Mm -hmm. It's just not there. I'm going to go next. Um, Jake, it's really funny that you think you're the most positive on the film. I've definitely talked the most and had the most to say, but I like, like I said earlier, it's about halfway. So, uh, five. Bro, how? You only talk negatively. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I guess I'll go next because, uh, damn, me and Mud have the same score. What? Bro, this does not get this. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Jake. Are you ready to have the lowest score of all of us? Yes, yes. Two. This I, was about to say, I was about like, to say. Ian I, with his fat okay, ten. Okay. <laughs> this, I, I will say it on record right now. I have been doing hot quality content for like three, four years. I don't even know anymore. This is the most you wouldn't guess our scores from our talk. Of anything we've ever That's done. That's not true. I preface this was pretty negative. I, but I, there's no... Well, Ian, maybe. But, like, there's no <laughs> way you could have anticipated. Because Mud was hampering down mostly, and I'm defending it mostly, and I'm lower than both of you. Remember that's when, Remember? No, that's not true. What, Dr. Sleep? Remember when we just shout on it and all gave it a six? No, Ian, Jake gave it a seven. And it wasn't just shitting. We had a full-on fight over that film. We did, and it was a one-point difference. Yeah. This is different, though, because that's still leaning the ways we said. This <laughs> yeah. is reversed. Yeah. This is crazy. The The main issue with this movie that keeps it from being, let's say, like a three or a four okay. is the only things that are good are the main character, and not even all of the writing, because some of the dialogue fucking sucks. Like... Everything the king said was boring and stupid. There's like, more bored. here that I like yeah. than you liked. I I like some of the I like some of the character interactions. Not every character interaction is a hit, obviously, but there are rarely any films where all of them are. Like the main character's motivations are very solid, consistent, well written, awesome. His interactions with his family, great, fantastic. He tells them to leave because he is afraid of what's going to happen to them through his own conscious. Mm -hmm. Like. There's a very good relationship and thing there. That being said, I shouldn't have to watch the first hour of a film to be remotely interested in the film. There's absolutely no way halfway through a film should it immediately, like... It's just Jumping ridiculous. quality, yeah. It's like watching the... Bro, you gotta watch the first three seasons. Fuck you. I'm not watching three seasons of anything. Suck my dick and balls. You're wasting my time. The first <laughs> hour of this film is genuinely a waste of time. I disagree strongly with that. I agree with first three seasons are bad. You got to get through it. That's a terrible mindset. But I disagree. The first hour is just nothing but shit. Like, it's mostly shit. <laughs> I agree no. with Ian. It's not mostly shit. It's, it's a slog. It's pretty rough. It's genuinely a slog. It's pretty rough. It's, it's a slog, and it's got a lot of pacing issues, a couple writing issues here and there. But I think the first half isn't this dumpster fire that everybody's saying it is. So the best one's Bridge on the River Kwai, because that film was amazing. And the worst one's Gigi, because this one's boring, but that one's wrong. Okay. Uh, I think... 
Let me double check mine. There's no way it's the worst because nobody gave it a zero. And we've given some fresh zeros on Best Pictures, fresh goose eggs. Have we ever given a straight zero? Cavalcade. Yeah, I've given a couple. Cavalcade. I think I might have. Uh, Gentlemen's Agreement, greatest show on earth. Uh, Bridge of the River Kwai because it's a fucking banger. And Tom Jones. Tom Jones is, in fact, boring. Man, shit. The Apartment. Yes. And Casablanca are tied. Oh, I thought Casablanca was your worst. I was like, bro. <laughs> okay. Oh, and uh, worst is fucking G -G. Tom G -G. Jones. GG. GG. I just remember GG existed. Fair Fuck enough. you, Ian. We Thank you for reminding me. Almost a Tom Jones. -er. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week for In the Heat of the Night. Yes, we will. And well, maybe not next week. Whenever. Whenever. But here's the thing, audience. We're going to try and do this in real life because right now there is a special Fathom event to see In the Heat of the Night on the big screen. And in no theaters at AMC. In theaters at AMC and none of us have seen it. So we're so all going to try and do that. So that is the plan. So we will be joining you guys next time for a quote quote live special we just saw it in theaters this probably be the only time this ever happens unless we unintentionally review a, a best picture winner in the future yes we'll try our very best yeah that would be great we, then we can just toss that on the best or worst pictures L podcast. literally <laughs> all right bye guys bye bye